Hey guys, and welcome to the video tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at optimizing our Windows PC for audio production and uh, doing a couple of tweaks and changes just to make sure we're getting the most out of our system for when we're making music. I'm currently doing this on Windows 10, but if you're on Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, then these uh, tweaks will also work on those versions as well. Uh, however, it might be a little bit different to how you navigate to some of the menus uh, to change these things. So the first thing, obviously, we want to do is to make sure our Windows uh, is up to date. If you're not sure how to do this, you should be pretty sure how to do this. It's just click on the start menu button and type in Windows updates and go to check for updates. Uh, you'll get this little tab come up. I've literally just done an update. I haven't restarted, which I should have probably done before doing this video, but this button here will say check for updates. Click on that, let Windows do its thing. If there's anything that needs installing, install it, then restart your computer. Next thing we want to do is make sure our other drivers are up to date. So next on the list is the graphics driver. If you built your system or you know what graphics card is already in your system, it's going to be a lot easier because you can just go, either go onto the manufacturer's website to download the drivers directly, or in most cases, um, manufacturers tend to provide a GPU utility which allows you to automatically update and install drivers uh, through the utility. Now, if you're not sure what graphics card you've got, uh, or you don't have any form of utility to do any updates, then there is a nice little tool which is free to download called GPU-Z. I don't know why I put CPU there. <laughs> well, it's called GPU-Z. I'll leave a link in the description below to the website so you can download it. Uh, as you can see, I've got it here on my desktop, but once you've installed it and downloaded it, you open it up, and it'll just basically give you all the information about your graphics card, so the, uh, the the make, the model, and you know how quick it is, what it's running at, how much RAM it's got, and all the rest of it. So it's a nice little utility for finding out what your GPU is, so you can go onto the manufacturer's website and get the correct drivers. Now, the next thing you want to check is that your motherboard is also up to date with its chipsets and drivers. Uh, there is a way to find out what your model of your motherboard is if you're unsure. It's a pretty nifty little trick. It's very easy to do. Uh, so what we want to do is um, on the keyboard press Windows key and R at the same time. And this will bring up the command uh, box. If we type in, well, the run box, if we type in command, it will open up this window here. Now all we're going to type in is what I've got written down here exactly like this with no spaces between the commas. So if you type in W mic baseboard get product and then comma manufacturer then version then serial number. If we click enter this should bring back all the information about our motherboard. So as you can see here, I've got a gigabyte motherboard, so that's the manufacturer, so we know where to go to get our drivers. And then we've got the product number, which is the Z87XUD3HCF, so that's what I'll be searching for uh, to find the drivers. And, uh, and then that's all we need to know. So that's a quick and easy way to find out your motherboard um, model. Uh, so once you've updated the chipset and drivers, another thing you could consider having a look at is your BIOS as well to make sure the motherboard BIOS is up to date on a stable version. Um, it's not a necessity for updating unless you're experiencing some problems, but it, it is a good idea to update your BIOS, although um, I do advise making a backup of uh, Windows, a rollback backup, just in case anything goes wrong and you don't, you don't want to you know, lose anything. Uh, next thing to do will be to update your audio interface drivers and firmware, which will be pretty straightforward as you'll know what audio interface you got. So you just go onto the manufacturer's site again and download the latest version. Uh, same applies to your DAW if you're using Cubase or Pro Tools or anything like that. Make sure you're running the latest version. And uh, now we're going to be looking at our device drivers, making sure they're up to date, and also the power settings. But I'm going to do the power settings first. So if you click on Win, the Windows key, and then type in Power, and go to Edit Power Plan here, 
Uh, the first thing you want to do is turn just turn off display. It's normally defaulted to 15 minutes. Set that to never. And then the next thing we want to do is actually do some advanced tweaking here. So if you go to advanced power settings, uh, and then here, if you click on the plus sign for hard disk, where it says turn off hard disk after, it'll have a numerical value. So normally, I think the default's 20 minutes. If you double click on that and just type never and hit apply, uh, that will basically keep your hard drive on so you won't have any random kind of dropout if, if something goes wrong with the power or something acts up a bit weird and your hard drive's not kind of fully with it, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Uh, the next thing we want to check is our processor power management, if I remember right. Yes. If you click on the processor power management tab, uh, where it says minimum processor states, if you just click on here, make sure that's set to 100. If it's set anything lower than 100, then up it to 100, uh, and that'll make sure that your processor is running at maximum uh, efficiency all the time instead of you know changing between like 10%, 20%, or whatever this is set to here. Uh, click apply and then click OK, and that's our our power options all sorted and obviously click save changes if you need to on there as well. Uh, another thing to do would be to detect, disable your screen saver which I'm all sure you're very familiar how to do by right clicking and going to, uh, you know, I think it's display settings actually, I can't even remember myself. Uh, scale layout, multiple displays, no, I think it's under properties, personalised. Yeah but you want to turn off your screen saver if you do have one. I can't remember how you actually turn it off, actually. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find it quicker than me. But yeah, turn off your screensaver. Uh, and now the, the next thing we also want to do is look at our devices. So again, click Windows, type in Device Manager. And on here, the first thing we want to have a, a tinker with is actually our universal serial bus controllers. So if you Click on that to expand the branch and tree. Um, down here or up here, dependent, it's everyone, it's different for everyone, but uh, you'll have one called USB Root Hub. There should be a couple of these. Uh, now, what we're going to do is open these up by either right clicking, going to properties, or double clicking, then navigating to power management, and then making sure that this box is unchecked. Allow computer to turn off this device to save power. Just give that an uncheck, and it just means that your um, USB ports will be on and functioning all the time, uh, which can stop them from suddenly idle. If you've got like a device which is idling and it suddenly turns off or something like that, it, it just stops some really annoying little issues that can potentially happen. And you want to do this for all of your USB root hubs on here. And then once you've done that, we can close device manager but the next thing we want to do is to scan our system to make sure all these devices are up to date uh, so what I'd recommend doing is go back to the start menu and then type in hardware uh, and devices and you'll get this one called fix and find problems with devices or you could just type that in ultimately and click this it'll bring up this little window click next and it will scan through your system and make sure that all your devices and stuff are pretty much up to date and it'll give you a little pop-up if anything's uh, not working or anything like that. Bear in mind if you've purposely disabled any audio drivers like anything that's on your graphics card or some PC monitors also have audio drivers it'll probably flag up saying that you need to fix the error but you can just ignore that. Right, so uh, the next and two final things we need to do is to set our DAW to run as an administrator. So I'm using Cubase. If I type Cubase in here, uh, right click on it and go to open file location, it'll take me to the shortcut of Cubase. And if I do the same again, right click open file location, it'll take me to where the EXE is. And then we can go to properties. And then in compatibility, 
you want to go down here and check run this program as administrator click apply and then click OK that's another thing that we've just done and the final thing here is you can do this or you know if you want to it might take a little bit of time but you can also optimize your hard drives as well for um, your audio uh, now wherever you've got your project files saved or wherever you've got any VST sample library say this might be something worth worth doing you might see a change in your performance you might not but I've done it on mine it does take a little while to do but if you if you go to um, you know open up your file browser uh, you can right click on here and go file explorer and then click on this PC uh, where I've got my VST samples here on this hard drive, if you re -cl right click and go to properties, you'll see at the bottom here you've got these two boxes. You've got one called compress this drive to save disk space. Make sure that's unchecked. And you can also uncheck this other one, allow files on this device to have con contents indexed in addition to file properties. Uh, if you want to check this as well, and click OK. It'll, it'll bring up like a subdirectory of if you want to do the whole drive or everything, the file and the folders, which is what you want to select. And it will go through everything and do its thing. And hopefully, this should improve the performance a little bit for your hard drives when you're uh, working with your samples and your audio projects for Cubase or you know Pro Tools or anything like that. It should just make it a little bit more snappier. Um, but you might not even notice the difference to be honest but it's entirely up to you the same again for your audio projects right click on the hard drive ah, what's happening here there we go doing the wrong thing and just uncheck those two boxes once you've done all this stuff it's always good to give your PC a restart or do it in between each change um, but hopefully this is going to um, help optimize your computer so you get a little bit more performance out of it for when you're making your music and maybe even resolve some really minor issues that you might be experiencing as well so if you found this video helpful guys always uh, you know click on the big red subscribe button and uh, leave any comments that you have in the uh, comments section below I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible like I normally do um, but until next time thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video